I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, and I'm on a bucket list adventure right now. This is something I've been wanting to do for years. I'm in India and I'm in the Himalayas. And what better way to explore the Himalayas than on a motorcycle? And there is no better motorcycle for the job than the Royal Enfield Himalayan. So this is gonna be a hundreds of kilometers, some absolutely incredibly high mountain passes, and I will share it all with you across this video. Welcome to the outside garage. So we've got the three Himalayans. I have got some kit that we're getting on them because we're obviously going on a road trip through the Himalayas and so we've got to have luggage. We've got a little bit of a mix of how we're doing the setup. So Alex has the OEM Royal Enfield hard panniers and then is going to, if I don't fall over my seat, is going to have a bag across the top for some extra stuff. Annika has a Royal Enfield luggage rack and we're gonna put a roll bag across the top of that. And then for a third attempt, because I kind of want to show you three different ways in which you can adventure with these bikes. I've then got the Moscow Reckless panniers. It looks a little bit chaos right now because it's pre-set up for a trip. So we're getting everything set up on. Um, I'm gonna be putting, I'm just gonna keep falling over, aren't I? Altitude totally changes your brain. I've got the little tank bag that's going to go on so I can easily deploy cameras and stuff. And then a really important thing is the Ecto Therma jacket from Moscow. Now, it looks like I'm in the tropics. It is beautiful sunshine right now. I'm in a tank top and shorts and it's glorious. But we are going to be going up there, <laughs> right into the Himalayas. And one of the mountain passes that we're going to be doing this week is incredibly exciting. I'm going to do a dedicated video about that road, but also stay tuned later in in this series of videos. We are going to be doing the highest motorizable mountain pass in the world, 19 and a half thousand feet. That is higher than Everest Base Camp. So an important thing about doing a trip here in the Himalayas is to make sure that you are climatizing yourself for the altitude. So we've actually had two days on the ground here, yesterday and today, just to cope with the fact that there is less oxygen. At some of the high passes that we're going to be at, there is up to 50% less oxygen in the air than normal, and that plays quite a lot of havoc on your body. So climatizing it to it's really important. Back to the jacket, also up at those high passes, there is snow and it's expecting to be as low as one degrees and if you've ever ridden on a motorbike in one degrees it could be cold so these jackets are a really good option heater jackets in general this one is actually oh it's so warm i regret showing you this but this is actually a, a thermal jacket as well so it's going to provide us warmth even when it's not plugged in has a handy cable and that wires into the battery of the bike it's incredibly easy to wire them in. You don't need to be a mechanic. You've got positive and negative on the batteries and then you've got your wires. So if I was super organized, I would have had the peep, peep to moment of the fact that I had my wire in my hand. It is foolproof. There is a red and a black. So you literally wire up red and the black. You always take the black off first, then wire up and the black one goes back on last. And all you really need is a tiny little screwdriver pretty much every single motorcycle has a battery, which means anybody can stay warm on the motorbike. So I'm gonna get that wired on. That's my next job. Panniers are on, I get my tank bag on. Basically this is set up time. They're absolutely beautiful bikes. Rode them very briefly last night to pop into town to get dinner. And if you haven't seen my previous Himalayan video, you can watch that from our review of the previous model. And there's gonna be a full review of the new one coming as part of this trip here in India. And I can already tell you from what I've done so far, that it is a big step up. They have done a very good job moving on to this next level of bike. I'm not gonna say any more than that because you know my rule, I can give you zero opinion until I've actually had enough time with this boy, girl, that was weird, on the saddle. So that is what this trip is gonna be about, going where it was designed for through the Himalayas. So I'm gonna get kitted up and then we'll keep climatizing. Everything's slow today. <laughs> gonna regret my life choices for a moment and test the jacket it has a little wire plugs in and there is a control button you get three settings 
It cannot drain your bike's battery. It knows that there's no power right now, so it won't turn on. It flashed to acknowledge that there was power, like connection, but it won't actually give me heat. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. Turning it on. And then you can see there is a red light in there. Give me a couple of seconds. Wait for the sweat beads to come, start coming down my uh, forehead. I don't know how they heat up this quickly. It's absolutely phenomenal. So if you've watched my Africa Eco Race video, which is where I did the original Dakar route in January, first British female to ever finish on a motorcycle. Super proud of that. But the morning liaisons in North Morocco were going down to really, really cold temperatures, close to minus in the mornings. And so I actually had this jacket. I got it in an extra large, which happened to suit my husband because it now fits him. And I was able to wear it over my air vest. And so for the road liaisons, I was warm and toasty. Really cold. Okay. Cool. So, right, I'm gonna get the saddle on. Yeah. And do this really slowly. Husband, wife, team, once again, doing their thing. Yeah. So you might have heard the name Rocky Monster before. You've probably seen him as well, and he has a lovely persona of being the grumpy boy in the background. But he's actually lovely, and he's not grumpy at all. So I managed to pull him all the way from the UK to India, and he's going to be one of my companions for this trip. The next companion, if we do a camera swap around, oh. this is where you suddenly go like this, and it's like magic. We have companion number three. Annika, Yo. also known as Fluffy, and please mention her as Fluffy in all comments because it really upsets her. And I've worked out now why it upsets her so much because apparently in Australia, a Fluffy is a bottom pop. Whereas... Which is a bottom pop is a fart in, for the people who don't know what a bottom pop is. I was trying to be polite, you're being really graphic. You're being graphic by calling me Fluffy. But in where in the UK, which is where we live, a Fluffy is really cute and fluffy. It's gonna be a really fun week, stay tuned. <laughs> it is morning of the adventure beginning. We've had two days in lay. I haven't really shared too much in the first two days. Really, really important with the altitude out here in the Himalayans that you give yourself the opportunity to get used to the altitude. Lay itself is at 12 and a half thousand feet, which is about 4,070 or so meters. That's where our hotel is now. Um, and altitude sickness is serious, you can, leave this life from it and it can hit all kinds of people so we were recommended that we had two days here loads of sleep loads and loads of water like so much water you feel like you're weeing all the time why does weeing always come up in everything food rest sleep and really really minimal activities so we've done that for two days we are on to day one on the bikes now and it is going to be a big day um rocking once how many miles have i got to say uh, we've got about 240k. 240k. So, you know, I face desert days where you've got like 700k, 600k, 500k. It doesn't sound like much, but we're in the Himalayas, which means we're going to be going like this. And the roads won't be passable. From what we work out on the GPS, it looks like today is going to be anywhere from six to eight hours of riding time. We are going from where we are now in Leh down to Zangra. Now, right now, I'm not going to go for a rule front run through the day, and we're probably not going to stop too much today, which means we're going to use loads of onboard footage on the cameras, try and capture loads of stuff for you, and then when we get to our homestay tonight, there aren't necessarily hotels in all the little villages we're going to be staying in, we will do a little bit of a low-down recap of how the day went. All of our bags are nearly packed, so this is my camera bag, we've got the drone in here, I've got uh, my Moscow Rackless bags for the back, two of these. Oxygen tank, uh, we've got three oxygen tanks. They give you 250 puffs of oxygen. We're hoping we're not gonna need them, but if we do need them, that could be the difference between life and death or trip continuing, trip ending. So we've got those. And then loads of layers. Then we're about ready. Anything to add, Mr. Ruck? No. <laughs> Hey, not at all, it's pretty good and brief. Thank you. Let's go team. Go team. Boo. Vanessa looks like she's almost packed there with the kitchen sink. Um, I, I have not got a kitchen sink. Oh. I have the, the hot tub. I've got a kitchen sink here. 
Ah, they, Alex has the kitchen sink. Vanessa has the hot tub. I have the snacks. We have nothing. We are like your donkeys. We have all of your kit. I have the snacks. You have the snacks. It's only so we don't need you. Don't, we don't need you. Otherwise, why would we need you? Yeah, because apparently there's a new saying. What was it? Um, ditch. Ditch How the do you dodo. Ditch the dodo, but you can't ditch the dodo when the dodo has the food. Mm. Are you surviving over there with your, your straps? I am surviving. It's one of those moments I wish that Andy Seaton was here to take care of my flappy straps. He's, uh, he's pretty good when it comes to administrating <laughs> flappy straps. <laughs> there is a definite man crush situation going on between Seats and my husband. So how will you know Seats? I did the Qatar International Baja with him. Check out that YouTube video and you can meet Seats. <laughs> and I, I stepped in for Seats on Iceland. Oh yeah. So I was the pretend Seats for, for a little while. After a pretty amazing start, we've managed to get out of Leh, which was amazing, manic Indian traffic, as you'd anticipate. We are in the Indus Valley, which has got the Indus River in the bottom. Absolutely breathtaking already. Crew's all good behind. Bikes are running beautiful. I can't believe how sturdy it is, even with uh, my kitchen sink on the back. Woohoo! This is going to be an amazing few days, weeks. We've landed in a really surreal place. This is like pristine, but it's got our name on it. Oh, the donuts. We have had an amazing morning following the Indus Valley. We've just stopped in Kelsey little town. It is an amazing little cafe run by the Indian Army. And we've got some proper treats. There's a coconut cookie. We've had a cream puff and a potato samosa. I wasn't expecting something quite so uh, 
civilized for our morning one coffee. It looks like there's a little bit of a weather front coming in, but we've got all of the right kit. We're going to be heading down into Cultsy Town now, popping out the other side and coming off onto another valley basin following another river. And a little bit later this afternoon, we're going to be starting to do a little bit more elevation. Right now we are at 3,483 meters. So we've dropped down from just over 4,000 meters and we're going to be going back up again and that is taking us to i'm switching between metrics now because we're going to go up to fourteen and a half thousand feet what's annoying is my garmin is only in meters so if we're at three and a half that is eleven and a half thousand feet now and we're going to go up to fourteen and a half and one of the really important things to know with altitude is you've got to go up to come down to help you with the climatization so yeah we've had a really good first coffee stop Pretty impressive roads, beautiful tarmac, less potholes in England, and a coconut cookie. You gonna share that? Yeah. in Yalama, which is a place that we've just been recommended that we pull into. The terrain as we came into is described as like a moon landing area and it was very unique. The different types of rock and mountains that we've seen already is crazy. You can see snow up on the tops and like the architecture of how they've built this town here. There's a lot to take in. We are in proper ADV country. The Himalayas are just amazing and the Himalayans are sucking it up. It's proper windy, haven't got a mic on. Have to get one out for later. Woo! That's the picnic spot. We're gonna pop our bottoms here and have a bite to eat. Officially branded. Yeah. Pow. So 
So, so uh, a little picnic story. We just met some German guys, and they've got some Moscow backcountry 35 litre panniers, and I'm a bit envious. They are mine are really good, but they are quite small. <laughs> Had to bring little knickers. Not that you need to know that. I'll uh, show you mine just to remind you straight by straight. But they are uh, much smaller. They're only 40 total, so they've got nearly double the capacity. Think how many kitchen sinks I could have bought. Going on? I'm sticker bumming. Yeah. There's a lovely guy from Germany, and he's got a sticker pannier. Can I go here? Anywhere you like. over backside of that mountain and we're down into the valley then we're going to go up over there currently at 4,600 meters yay I don't know what they're eating, rocks. They are hardcore donkeys. Ah, oh, this place is beautiful. Everyone doing good? Oh, it's super zoomed in. Hang on, I zoomed in on the donkey. Woo, this place is beautiful. Everyone doing good? Yeah. Woo. Onwards, that way. found some fluffy animals there's a whole load of them up behind us we stopped in a valley basin we are on the way back up on the altitude front let me have a quick look and see what we're at at the moment altitude wise it's quite handy having a garmin 4855 meters we're right on the next all edge of Machu Kangaroo Mountain, which if I'm looking orientating the mount right, that is that big peak up there. Got some four by fours going past. There's loads of people enjoying the Himalayas. So we've got Machu Kangaroo and uh, Ukapu in the surrounding mountain ranges. Alex is gonna man pose next to one of them. Look at that man pose. And then we've got that one up there. And then some fluffy cows that are up behind us. They could be yaks. I'm not the most clued up on my animals. And beautiful sunshine. We're at 14,600 meters, feet. which, uh, feet. We're at 14,600 feet, um, which on meters off my watch is 4,800 meters. I don't know which metric do you use. Let me know in the comments if you prefer meters or feet. I kind of seem to be working in both because my Garmin is meters and then my husband is feet. And most of the world seems to be feet because that's what you talk about with aeroplanes. Anyway, this is incredible. We just stopped for a little bite to eat. We've got about 90 kilometers left to go and we've been on the road seven hours so far. So it's going smoothly.
ba ba da We're going up and up and up and up. And that means we're getting the snow. <laughs> this way is higher and higher. And this way is just epically beautiful. Absolutely amazing. We've still got 44k to go, so we're not giving you any updates today. Oh, oh it's the gopher's burrow! He went in a little hole! Ah! Right, we've got to keep going because the sun is actually going to go down quite soon. Talk about incredible roads. We're hoping that doesn't fall on our heads, but it's one massive canyon. Block. It's obviously pressed avalanche. It looks like he's going to clear a little bit for us. Oh my goodness. <sighs> this is wild. Is he going to counterbalance and come down that? Uh, there's a river canyon there, a mountain there, and we've got about half an hour of sunlight. It's a meter and a half block off on this side. Rippy smooth. Oh, can you see me? Sure. Can you just smooth it just a little? Okay, so they've cleared. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. Perfect. 
perfect. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you.